There's a paragraph in the introduction to Socrates Meets Jesus by Peter Kreeft that comes to mind every time I think about the portrayal of Christ in fiction. Part of it reads as follows. I can think of only two nearly successful attempts to portray Christ as a literary character. One is Dostoevsky's Fable of the Grand Inquisitor, in which Christ speaks not a single word and performs only one single act. The other is C.S. Lewis's Aslan, the great lion lord of Narnia. But that was successful only by the device of double distancing, from Christ as a man to Christ as a lion, and from earth to a fictional land of Narnia. Now, surely there have been other successful portrayals, but Kreeft gives us a really good framework for us non-geniuses as we attempt to portray Christ in our novels. The first example Kreeft gives us is Jesus in The Brothers Karamazov, which contains the Grand Inquisitor scene mentioned above. This scene is a parable written by one of the characters and recited to another. Here, within this parable, Jesus returns to Earth and is quickly arrested by the religious elites. They sit him down, and one of them begins to explain why we as a people or they as Russia, no longer need Jesus. The whole speech is very long and essentially boils down to the assertion that organized religion can do better for the poor religious peasants than Jesus can. The scene concludes with Jesus listening to the entire speech, giving the Grand Inquisitor a kiss and walking out the door. If you have not read The Brothers Karamazov, you must, but that's a side note. If we look at Dostoevsky's portrayal of Jesus as successful, there's a glaring lesson to be learned. Jesus does not speak. I think this is really the best way to do it. Jesus being God is far greater than any of our imaginative skills can do justice. We can't possibly provide words that could be appropriately attributed to him. And frankly, we shouldn't try. In fact, it might even be a transgression of the first and second commandments. That is, no other gods, no graven images. A safe and reasonable rule for a Christian writer is to avoid portraying the person of Christ at all. But if necessary, have him say nothing. If God does speak, it might be appropriate to have him say things that we already know he has or will say. For example, well done, my good and faithful servant, if you, you know, manage to get to heaven or depart from me. I never knew you if you're not going to heaven, that sort of thing. Now let's look at Jesus' portrayal in the Chronicles of Narnia. Kreef seems to consider Lewis's attempt at portraying Christ a success because of the way Lewis was able to distance Aslan from Jesus. That is, the words Aslan speaks cannot be construed as words that Jesus has or would speak. Aslan is a Christ figure, but not here on this earth. You could argue that those lines blur a little bit where Lewis insinuates that Aslan is a manifestation of Jesus, i.e. your world, I have a different name. I think that's in Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, maybe Last Battle. But largely, this space is significant enough to prevent any confusion we might have. This is an important step because it avoids the trouble that comes with trying to incorporate this world's theology with the theology of your fictional world. If you are trying to convey truth, there should be many similarities, but at least the differences won't be blasphemy because you are not talking about the real Jesus or the real God, rather a Jesus figure. Beyond these two examples, another solution is to have no Christ figure at all, but instead Christ actions. Any character can act in a way that Christ did in a specific sense. Love, compassion, self-sacrifice, these traits can be exemplified by characters that are not Christ figures, but rather representative of him in some specific way. This is perhaps the easiest way to represent Christ in fiction, but it does run the risk of becoming rather vague. There are surely many other considerations as we seek to represent Jesus in our writing, but Peter Kreeft does offer some helpful advice in point. 